Hello everyone. I'm very glad that uh, despite uh, the difficult situation with the coronavirus, the Platter Vikings is still taking place even if uh, only online. And uh, I really hope <laughs> that everything will work out and we will meet in person at the end of August at the venue in Oslo. So let me introduce myself. I'm Alexander Denisov, a Flutter and Dart GDE from Moscow, Russia. I work for EPAM Systems, where I'm development lead of uh, one of Flutter projects and a technical co-head of EPAM Flutter competency. Uh, it means that I'm responsible for Flutter development in the company from a technical point of view. Uh, the project I'm currently leading is very, very cool. And uh, our team has got a lot of interesting experience working on it. Today, I want to share with you some part of this experience in an area that is not very much covered in the documentation. I'm going to talk with you about Flutter for TV platforms. So let's get started. One year ago, in March, Flutter got a version 2.0 and uh, gave an opportunity to develop uh, not mobile applications only, but web and desktop applications as, as well. And uh, what about TV platforms? Uh, there are a lot of different smart TV platforms for which we also can develop native applications. But there's a question, is it possible to develop applications for smart TV using Flutter or not. If you try to search in Google or in Stack Overflow for information on the topic of Flutter for TV, you will find something uh, like this. Uh, since no official support is there yet, uh, presumably uh, you will be on your own if you try. But if you try to search in the Flutter repository on GitHub, uh, you can find a lot of issues associated with the development for smart TVs. And not even only Android TV and Apple TV, but many more platforms. Uh, we can conclude that despite the fact uh, that there is no official support, developers continue trying to create applications for smart TVs. Why? Uh, there are some reasons. Firstly, it's just very cool <laughs> when you can take an already written Flutter application and just run it on the TV. Secondly, if you need an application that will work both on mobile phones and on TVs, Flutter development allows you to save resources. What I mean is, uh, the more platforms using a single code base there are, uh, the more resources you save. It is not necessary to have separate development teams for TV applications. Everything could be done by the same team. And this is great. Actually, uh, we are not an exception. Our task uh, was to create an application for several platforms at once. Guess how many? Six platforms at once. Wow. <laughs> not so wow, though. Starting from version 2.0, it seems to be nothing surprising. Now Flutter officially supports six platforms. But uh, let's see uh, which platform exactly I am talking about. Android, iOS, Web, Android TV, Apple TV, Fire TV, and Tizen. Uh, sorry, I've miscalculated. Seven platforms. Now it's time for WOW. <laughs> so uh, we are just some of those developers who have created an application not only for mobile and web, but also for TV platforms, uh, despite the fact that this type of targets is not officially supported. That's why I'm here and uh, want to share the experience uh, that we've gained during development. Uh, but difficulties uh, we've encountered, uh, what bumps we have got. Uh, let's start with which platforms there are for smart TVs. Apple TV and Android TV, of course. 
uh, Tizen, uh, and operating system by Samsung is quite often found on Samsung TVs. Uh, it can also work on smartwatches and phones. Uh, WebOS is an operating system with a long history. It was created by Palm, then bought by Hewlett Packard, where it was open sourced, and now belongs to LG and is most often found on LG TVs. Uh, Roku TV uh, is uh, another uh, platform uh, developed for smart TVs. Uh, the operating system is called Roku OS. And finally, Fire TV, platform by Amazon. Actually, there are probably more platforms for smart TVs, but I only know about these ones. <laughs> Of course, it's always better not just to say words, but also to show examples on a real application. Unfortunately, I can show the application we are working on since this contradicts the NDA. Uh, so I've prepared an example of a simple application with a responsive UA that can work everywhere, mobile phones and smart TVs. It's just a gallery of movies and TV series. Uh, if you tap, uh, on any of the movies, a page with detailed description will open. Uh, but this is just an example. <laughs> I apologize, playback is not implemented there yet. Uh, screenshots on the previous slide uh, show us uh, the result of running these applications uh, on iPhone and on Android tablet. Let's now try to just run it on a TV device. For the very first launch, uh, let's take Android TV. I experimented with the uh, Xiaomi Mi Box, but uh, the kind of device doesn't matter. You can take any Android TV device. Actually, the launch of a flat application on Android TV is extremely simple because Android TV is the same Android OS. You can just open the Android TV emulator uh, well, we'll connect the real device via ADB and uh, press the run button. And voila, the application just starts without any additional actions. Everything is exactly the same as with regular development for Android. Tada, we have launched uh, the Android TV application. Well, uh, now let's try to do the same with Apple TV. Moreover, an Apple TV simulator can also be selected as a target device in Android Studio. Um, but no, <laughs> the miracle didn't happen. There is an exception. Uh, this app is not made for this device. Uh, this app was not built to support this device family. Uh, error launching application on Apple TV. Okay. Let's try to understand why we weren't successful and what is the difference between Android TV and Apple TV. If you look at the structure of the Flutter project, you can see different folders for iOS and Android applications. So uh, there is an Android project in a, the Android folder, and there is a prepared Xcode project for iOS application in the iOS folder. And of course, it's quite obvious that the iOS project will not run on Apple TV. There is TV OS operation system, which is actually not iOS. And as you can see, there is no tvOS folder in the project. Actually, uh, we can open uh, this project as an Xcode and edit it. I mean, change the deployment target to tvOS, change our storyboard, and so on, in order to make it a tvOS project. But <laughs> even if you do this, uh, the Flutter application will still not start anyway. The question is why? So I, I mentioned before, tvOS is not iOS. 
it's a different operating system quite close to ios in its structure and having the same basis darwin but there are differences at least in api a part of uh, the ios api is simply absent in tvos so uh, the flutter engine will fall when building a tvos application trying to find a non-existent method but here you can remember uh, that uh, flutter uh, is an open source framework and uh, if uh, something doesn't suit us we can go into the source code and just change it if you look into the flutter repository you can find a step-by-step -step manual or how to contribute to the framework here uh, points three and four uh, will be especially useful for our purposes since uh, there is a description or how to build the flutter engine locally and uh, set up the environment to use it um, that is uh, you can make some changes then build the engine itself and then build the flutter application using your own custom version of the engine <laughs> You just need to know C++ and Objective-C, just a little bit. <laughs> and then feel free to cut out uh, calls of methods that are absent from TVOS or edit calls of methods whose signatures are different. You can go this way, but you don't have to. There are enthusiasts who have already done it for you and open sourced it. So you can just follow the link and download the prepared Flutter engine fork. Then uh, you still have to compile the engine locally. Uh, we also use this fork. And of course, we contribute to its development. You can even find my name in the description. Unfortunately, uh, the engine is prepared for Flutter version uh, 2.04, which is quite old given that the current stable version is 2.8.1. Uh, but I'm sure it will be updated soon. This is open source, right? Actually, uh, in order to try to build your first Apple TV application, uh, 2.0.4 is quite a good option. Well, actually, I can say that the Flutter applications can work on Apple TV. It's just uh, necessary to build a custom Flutter engine and make some changes in the Flutter project. <laughs> That's it. Let's check. Voila, my simple applications launched. Hooray! <laughs> uh, uh, you can also do the same. In order to simplify the process, I prepared the script, which will do almost everything for you. You just need to set up your environment using the custom engine, compile it, assign the path to the compiled engine to environment variable Flutter custom engine, and execute the script run Apple TV SH. Xcode with the Apple TV project will be opened in the result. Uh, you just have to press the start button and enjoy. OK, let's move on. Tizen. Actually, uh, the way to launch Tizen on, uh, I mean, a Flutter on Tizen application uh, is the same as for Apple TV. It's just necessary to prepare a custom engine. Mm, only you, you need to edit the source code to the engine, not for iOS, <laughs> but for Linux. And like previously, you don't have to do it yourself. The developers from Samsung have published the Flutter Tizen project on open source. Uh, thank you <laughs> uh, uh, for this. Uh, and uh, this project gives you an opportunity to build applications for smartwatches, IoT devices, and uh, smart TVs on Tizen. But only the latest platform version are supported. Moreover, they forked not only the engine, but also the framework itself and added uh, their own command line interface, which allows you not to build a custom engine manually, but does everything automatically. You just 
need to use the flutter tizen command instead of flutter command like uh flutter tizen create to create a project flutter tizen run to run and so on more details you can find in the manual in the repository to check how it works you need to have a tizen device or install a tizen emulator uh i don't have a real tizen device so I checked the functionality on an emulator, but I'm sure there are no difficulties with the real device as well. Uh, my example project is also prepared for Tizen, but mm, you need to use Flutter Tizen to run it. Whew. The next platform I was going to focus on is Fire TV. But with Fire TV, everything turned out to be very simple. Fire TV is made on the basis on Android TV with minimal changes. It doesn't uh, even have its own emulator. You need an Android TV emulator for debugging. And for Flutter applications, everything is the same as with Android TV. I've checked on Fire TV stick and everything was fine. So let's move on. Uh, regarding WebOS and Roku TV, um, unfortunately, I have <laughs> nothing to say so far we don't have to support them and at the uh, our current project and uh, i haven't done any research in this direction yet actually i'm sure that flutter applications can also be launched there so if somebody from the audience has conducted such experiments please write to me it will be really helpful so uh, we've looked at several different smart TV platforms and figured out how to run Flutter applications there. But just launching the application is not quite enough. There are many different questions. For example, uh, how do you organize the interaction with a user? You can't tap the TV screen with your finger and uh, you don't uh, even do a mouse click like in a browser. You have to interact with the TV using remote control unit. Therefore, I have uh, identified the first three questions that arise when working on applications for smart TVs using Flutter. And I'm going to try to answer them. The first one is how to check the platform. It's obvious that the layouts should be different for mobile and TV applications. But how to understand which platform is current if TV is not supported and uh, not unlisted in platform class? Uh, the second question I've already mentioned in the previous slide is how to interact with users if you don't have usual ways like gestures uh, and uh, you should support a remote control unit. And the third one is about plugins. Uh, since TV platforms are not officially supported, how do you understand uh, which plugins can be used and which can't? Let's figure this out. So now let's consider the first question. Uh, how to understand which platform is current? There is a platform class in Flutter which allows mm, to determine where the application is launched. So. Uh, we have the issues here. Platform uh, is Android will be true both in case of a mobile phone and in case of a TV because Android TV is also Android. Uh, in the Apple ecosystem, the situation is absolutely similar. Platform is iOS will be true on both iPhone and Apple TV. Uh, what should we do with this? Actually, we just need to add additional information about the platform during the build. This can be done in several ways. Making different entry points, for example, like main point dart and main TV point dart. But it seems to me that the easiest way is to use Flutter environment variables. Take a look at this example. 
First, I created a TV mode variable. I provided different values for build on in case of TV and off in case of mobile. Then I created the my platform class and used it instead of the platform. <laughs> this way we can be sure which platform is current. Current. Uh, so that's it. <laughs> the first question is answered. Let's move on to the second question. Uh, it looks a bit more complicated. How to organize user interaction? Uh, let's start again with Android TV because there are fewer difficulties. <laughs> Actually, uh, a remote control unit is connected uh, to the flutter as a raw keyboard and events of pressing the buttons on the remote are processed as per pressing the buttons on the keyboard. Up, down, left and right buttons are the same as cursor buttons at keyboard. In fact, Flutter has already got the mechanism that handles these events. Uh, this is the focus widget. The widget manages a focus node to allow keyboard focus to be given to the widget and its children. Usually, uh, it's used to navigate between widgets using a keyboard, for example, in the browser. Starting with Flutter 2.0, you don't need to do anything to make the focus move with the cursor arrows. Focus will be moved. You just need to implement highlighting of focused widgets, of course. But if you want to handle remote control unit events in your own way, there are special classes in Flutter that allow you to do this. Row key up event and row key down event are the classes used to describe specific row key event. Row keyboard listener is a widget for listening to these events. Uh, system channels key event is a low level channel for getting events from a system. Uh, you can add your custom listeners and handle everything you want. Uh, take a look at this example. I've added a listener to the keyboard, which uh, when the cursor button is pressed, will call the corresponding method. Uh, by the way, we also need to deal with Apple TV. And there is a difference. Uh, the standard Apple TV remote control unit has no arrow buttons at all, touchpad only. And um, it's necessary to support not only taps and clicks, but swipes as well. Um, if you remember, for Apple TV support, we need to use a custom engine, which means uh, we can make changes there. So for receiving touchpad events on the Flutter side, it's just necessary to add some code to the engine that provides information about taps, clicks, and swipes to the Flutter app for platform channels. Actually, in the open source custom Flutter engine that we use, taps on the left, right, up, and down sides uh, are transformed to row keyboard cursor events automatically. And click is transformed to press center event. So we don't need to do anything additional to support taps and clicks. Uh, the only thing left uh, for you to do is to handle swipes in your Flutter application. It's necessary to create a platform channel instance and uh, add a message handler to it. There you need to check the type of swipe event. And if the type is move, check the length of the swipe. If the swipe is longer than 250 pixels, the method for moving the focus will be called. 250 pixels is the most appropriate value that was chosen by the trial and error method. So this is a, a very simple example of management swipe behavior, but it's just code. And if you need a more complicated handler, you can write it yourself. 
let's take a look how it's working. We can move focus by the remote control. And when you click select on Android TV remote or click uh, on the touchpad on an Apple TV remote, the detail screen of the selected uh, movie will be opened. You can also download my example and run it on the platform you prefer and check. That's it. Now we can implement user interaction. And again, with Apple TV, it's a bit different than with other platforms. Finally, the last but not least unanswered questions remains which plugins are supported when we develop applications for smart TVs? Uh, the first is Android TV as usual, <laughs> together with Fire TV, because as you can remember, uh, they are almost the same. Everything is fine here. <laughs> if plugin works with Android, it will work with Android TV, because you know, Android, is, um, Android TV is a uh, Android OS as well. Uh, of course, I'm not talking about plugins for native functionality that are absent from Android TV, like camera. Uh, Flutter for Tizen uh, has a page, special page, uh, with information about supported plugins. Actually, there is a list of extensions for standard plugins like battery or image picker. Um, because Tizen is not support officially yet. And also there are some Tizen only plugins like Tizen app control. Uh, there are 25 plugins in total, but uh, um, a half year ago, there were only 13. This is uh, very good progress, I think. There is also information about device limitation. Uh, for example, you know, the plugin for battery doesn't work on the TV because TV doesn't have a battery. <laughs> An interesting moment. Uh, there is a plugin for the camera that doesn't work uh, on any of the supported devices because the camera is not on the TV and uh, not on the watch, but, but the plugin is there. The page is very informative. Uh, let's wait for more plugins in the future. Regarding Apple TV, the situation with plugins is almost the same as an Android TV, but there is a little difference. Some plugins uh, work out of the box and some don't. It depends on whether the iOS API, uh, <laughs> which is used in the plugins supported by Apple TV or not. But if we add an unsupported plugin on Android, the application will start, uh, but plugin just won't work properly. On Apple TV, the application will crash <laughs> during the build uh, when trying to install a port with this plugin. In this case, uh, you have to fork a plugin and add the implementation for Apple TV separately. Well, now it's time for the final slide. And what, what are conclusions? Yes, it's possible to create Flutter applications for TV platforms. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. <laughs> for example, take a look at how many different remote controls I have had to check. Fortunately, a big part of the issues have already been solved before you and uh, you don't have to start from scratch. But nevertheless, there are still many issues yet. And perhaps it's uh, your pull request that is needed <laughs> for another unresolved problem. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. There is my Twitter handle if you want to ask something uh, directly. And of course, the link to the GitHub where the sample application can be found. Uh, feel free to ask any questions.